Hello again. So, today we are going to have a look at height field optimization and I prepared two setups for you. Um, this one is already the more advanced one where you can look through camera. And you can see the stuff that's closer to the camera is more dense and the stuff that's further away is a bit more sparse. And this also applies to the UVs and the texture density. And this one is a bit more simple where you just have a point and then it generates around the point and it's not dependent on the camera. So I figured to not make the video super long and confusing, I will just give you the files and I will set up a Discord, I guess. So I will just put it into a channel there and it's for free, of course, and you can just go there. It will be super empty and you can grab your file and stay or leave. I don't mind, but I feel like that's the most simple way. And then you can just look through the files yourself. I feel like that's always a bit easier. And I will just explain the major thoughts that I had while creating this. So let's have a look. So I just created a super simple height field here. Nothing special, it's just a noise. And the main idea behind the setup is to create this point here and copy paste it, uh, copy transform it twice to get this pattern. And then I give it an attribute, which corresponds to the point number. And to show you why am I doing this, if I just look at the point numbers here, you can see, like here, they look good. But when I copy them, obviously the, the numbers won't be corresponding to each other, right? And so we will just store the point number here into an attribute. So if we look at the attribute now and disable this, we can see now it corresponds. So we have the 10 always on this circle. And that's what we want to transfer back to our height field here. Um, let's take this off and this. And when we have a look at it, like the retention, you can already see the gradient. And I do one minus, so um, it's denser on the inside here in the, in the point. And then I just use it for the poly reduce. All right, it finished cooking, so now we can have a look at it. Um, let's turn this off. And now we can already see the different densities. And what you want to do is just put the retention attribute here. You can also always check it out in the in the geometry spreadsheet. And I recommend to have it always here, like to create your workspace like this, so you can always see what's going on. And yeah, if you if you ever feel like you are not seeing the retention thing, even though you have it in here, just crank up the weight because sometimes, like sometimes I have a weight of three, sometimes sixty-five, All right? And if you feel like you can't see your retention attribute, just crank up the weight by a lot, and then it will show up. And now for the UVs, instead of just having the gradient like this, we want to have the splits here in the middle again, right? So what I'm doing now is using the attribute wrangle with the near point, just for you as a reminder, like this is our geometry here. So I will use these single areas here, and that's going to be my shells. When we look at this now, oh, yeah, you can see it. I will enumerate through it, and then I will use the for each according to that, and, oh, and now we have our UVs. All right, and that's already the first and simple option. Let's have a look at the more advanced one, which is this one, um, that accords to the camera view. So we're starting with the same height field again. It's very easy, just a little noise. And then to get the camera first from, I'm using the method where we are creating a volume and then we use the front camera here and we link it to the shot cam, which is this one. And um, I set up some bounds here, just so that it's a bit wider. We have some, some buffers on the side. And then you can just use the volume bound to get this piece of geometry. And now we basically want to do the same thing again that we did in the easier one. And creating this star-like pattern first. And my solution for this is to get the middle points of the frost drum. Um, literally just, you know, start point and then end point here. 
and then I'm adding them to get the line. Same thing here. And then I will just add them by skip every end point so I can have a close geometry here to a polyfill so I can get this piece of geometry. And then for the second step, we are using the height field and we're using the frost from box here and we do a boolean intersection so we just have the thing that our camera sees right so let's look through it exactly and then we do the intersection analysis and it doesn't really matter that it's a bit cut off here because i'm only interested in the first and the last point and to get this i will use the delete node with the zero and dollar n and if you're not sure what the dollar n is you can always click here and then the help command will show up and you scroll down or we can just click here on the locals exactly and then you will find the n and that's how you get the first and the last point and i'm connecting them and i do have the line that shows directly to the camera no matter how we point it we always have always have the middle line now and then I'm doing some operations, basically, I have a, I have a peak node here, I'm, I'm giving it some normal so I can actually use the peak node in the right direction, just to be sure that it's always um, a bit further than the height field. And then we're creating the star here again. And the two things that I want to point out about this is A, the curve we sample by density. It's a lapse node and it's super cool because you can get these intervals here. And the other thing is, that here for the copy, we always want to have it um, according to the camera, right? So I'm just using this expression here, which basically says that we are using the zero point, so the one that's in the middle, and we transform the pivot according to its position, and it's the zero position. So this one is the two position because it's like XYZ. All right, and then the star will always be looking like this. If you, if you don't have this, if you take this out. See, it will be just like this. Okay, let's put it back in. Be sure that it's green because now it's not linked. Okay, cool. And then I'm only interested in what's inside the frost drum. So I will just group it, delete the rest. And now we're doing all of the attribute transfers again that we did before with the retention and stuff. Um, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the only difference is that here um, we have everything according to the camera. And I just group the first drum again. And then everything that's inside the uh, first drum will keep this. And everything that's outside the first drum will just get the minimum attention value. So it looks like this. It will be a bit greener. So it will be more sparse. This is more dense, this is more sparse. And then we have the same operations again as with the other setup. We use poly reduce, and this will take a while now. And then we have our retention attribute here. We put it into the retention again, the high value of the weight. All right, nice. And now it finished cooking. We're transferring the part index again because uh, we're using it for the UVs. And then same setup as the other one looks like this. We can look through the camera now. Everything in here is fine. Everything outside we don't care because it's out of camera. Yeah, and then it looks like this. Very dense here. Gradually getting less dense. And you can always adjust it like the density um, and the gradient in between here. And you can also, if we go here, curve sample by density, we can change the segment. So we have either more or less steps here. Let's just change it to and wait again. All right, it finished cooking. See, and now we have less of these areas. And look at the UVs, takes the density. It's also a little bit more dense here, a little bit less dense here. You can also uh, change it to give it even less udum space and even more udum space. And yeah, as I said, I will put the fights for free on, on a Discord server. I just link it in the description. And you can grab it from there. All right, and that's already everything that I wanted to show you today. I wish you a really nice evening or day or whatever time zone you're in right now.